to put it out there from the start, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. <laughs> it quite a bit. <laughs> that's, that's funny. When it comes down to it, the child actors were more than great. There were elements of the movie that felt like they were ripped straight out of the Goonies in the best way possible. The cinematography and color grading were eye-catching and visually satisfying. And in the end, I'm totally on board for a sequel. The movie was loads of fun. However, when it comes to the nature of the actual horror in it, you know, the stuff the movie has primarily focused on, I think the film fails pretty miserably. Which is kind of disappointing, to be honest. Well guys, welcome back to another review where I talk about why a movie was pretty good and not great. There have been too many of these this year. Now look, just to keep y'all from commenting your dumb crap in the comments, obviously what scares you is subjective. This review is all my personal taste, it's my opinion, blah blah blah, you know the drill. Can I please talk now? It pains me to say that I did not find it scary in any way, form, or fashion. Which was a little odd considering I'm not generally a horror movie guy and it took me a while to convince myself to see this at all. So when I finally went to the theater, I was prepared to be scared, like you should be when you see a horror movie. But, uh... That's not scary. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. The main thing it was missing for me was subtlety. In fact, that's the main thing most movies are missing, but here its absence stands out particularly. So look, just for reference, let's compare the opening scenes of the 1990 It movie and the 2017 It movie. Both films open with the same scene. Billy's little brother Georgie is running down the street chasing his paper boat in the rain when suddenly he encounters Pennywise the Clown in a sewer, and he's eventually dragged in and never seen again. Here's the difference between the two. In the 1990 version, we see Georgie try to take the boat, Pennywise grabs his hand, and then there's a brief image of Pennywise's face as Georgie disappears with a scream. That's pretty scary, honestly. It's not too over the top. I mean, it's cheesy, sure, but at least it's, I don't know, kinda subtle? <sighs> In the 2017 version, Pennywise grows giant teeth and bites off Georgie's arm, leaving this small child kicking and screaming on the ground with blood spewing everywhere until he's finally dragged down into the depths of the sewer, howling like a madman by this huge monster we've now seen in its entirety. Holy frick was that over the top or what? And the difference between those two scenes basically summarizes my thoughts on this movie as a whole. To be sure, I'm not saying that the 1990 It movie is better than this one. It's, uh, it's not. But it is at least a little more subdued. And that's what it comes down to, isn't it? Horror is often far scarier when it's more subdued. The thing most people don't seem to realize, especially in this constant churn of horror movies today, is that seeing the monster in its entirety or being shocked by a really gross zombie or a creepy face... It's not actually that scary. Not always, but oftentimes, it's when you don't see the scary stuff that you're truly unsettled. It's like with the shark in Jaws. Spielberg originally intended for the shark to be more present in the film, but due to technical problems, it ended up only showing up in small parts. And that made it far more terrifying. We're constantly looking for the shark, but not seeing it. And so when we do finally see it towards the end, that gives the entire encounter a lot more weight. Why are you son of a... In 2017's It, we see Pennywise do a creepy, violent monster thing in his full form within like the first five minutes. After that, there's nothing to build up to. We've seen the monster. There's no intrigue. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that we shouldn't ever see the monster or the scary, gross things at all. But seeing them in small glimpses or waiting till the third act for a big reveal can often help build the creepy factor. Stranger Things Season 1, which I love with all my heart, has a very similar opening scene to the 2017 It movie. In fact, it might even be a bit of an homage to it. In the opening scene, Will Byers encounters a monster and he's eventually taken by said monster. However, the opening scene of Stranger Things, to me, is far scarier than it was. And that's because we only see the Demogorgon in small doses. And when he takes Will, we don't even know how he does it. Now that is scary. 
The funny thing is, there are two threats in this 2017 It movie. One is the external threat of Pennywise the Clown, and the other is the more internal threat of some of the human characters who become villains. Like the stereotypical bully who chases down the kids and beats them up, or Bev's father who is abusive to her. What's odd is, ultimately, for me at least, I found the internal threats of the human characters to be far more thrilling than the external ones like Pennywise. And that's because they were more subdued and they felt real. They weren't all just about bloody monsters going boo in your face. I know on paper it sounds like seeing a woman with no arms or a guy whose eyeballs are falling out of his head. Sounds like it would be scary. But ultimately, I don't think it's that scary. I know on paper it sounds like having a sudden jump scare where Pennywise appears out of nowhere with a loud noise. Sounds like it would be scary. But I don't think that's scary either. <laughs> I'm sure we've said it before, but a loud noise is not scary. It's startling, it might make you jump, but it's gonna leave no lasting impacts. Jump scares and zombies and disgusting monsters are gross and jarring and startling, yes, but they are completely devoid of any real terror that gets at the hearts of the audience. Do you have the oddly specific fear of abstract paintings coming to life and eating your face off? Because I sure don't. I think if a movie truly wants to scare its audience, it needs to go deeper than usual and make the creep factor more about the subtext of the horror than just the loud noises or the bloody faces. It's like the difference between me running up and going BOO in your face versus me telling you a scary story about a ghost that haunts bedrooms at midnight. Which one's gonna stay with you longer? I think it's the story. Me going BOO in your face might startle you more initially, but the story is gonna stick with you. Some of the best horror movies out there do not depend on jump scares or gross images in any way. Two of the most recent horror movies, which I've really enjoyed, Get Out and 10 Cloverfield Lane, both have moments in them that scarred and disturbed me on a far more personal and intimate level than anything in it. And they did so without the use of a creepy monster mugging the camera or an obnoxious screeching sound effect. That's because with those movies, it's not necessarily what's on screen that's scary. Instead, the horror mainly depends on the character's terrified reactions to their situation and the subtext of what's going on. This is my favorite scene in 10 Cloverfield Lane. I still get chills to this day. Michelle is looking out of the window in the bomb shelter when she suddenly sees the word help scratched on the inside of the glass with bits of blood. We don't see what happened there. There's no monster that pops out from behind a corner. Instead, we're left to imagine what this image means and how the events of it played out. And ultimately, what we can imagine in our head is far more terrifying than anything we'll ever see on screen. But of course, if this scene had played out like most horror movies today, it would have had loud screeching sound effects and a jump scare to top it all off. might have startled you, but it would not have stuck with you. So look, I know I've been ragging on this movie for the entire episode, but I actually enjoyed it a lot. The child actors were fantastic, and I can't wait to see who they cast as the adults. And from a technical perspective, the movie is pretty much a standout. You can count me in for a sequel any day now. That said, despite the movie's victories, I still wish it had managed to properly do the one thing it really set out to do. Scare the audience. And as of right now, I just don't think it quite hit that mark. Thanks for watching guys, and if you like the content on this channel, be sure to go support it on Patreon. All the tiers recently, so that now there are some pretty sweet rewards when you pledge. So go do that, follow me on Twitter at luckbustedpod, and have a nice day. I don't know where that came from. Uh, yeah, see you guys later.